poor growth conditions in the panhandle may lead to lower numbers of grasshoppers this year. That's one pest on the mind of producers in the West. We talked with UNL Extension entomologist Jeff Bradshaw from his office in the Panhandle earlier this week about army cutworms and the potential for reduced grasshopper populations. This year in the western U.S., the results of the survey, the adult survey um, at the end of 2012, uh, is indicating that the likelihood of high grasshopper populations is pretty low uh, throughout the western U.S. And in fact, right now, uh, if you look at the prediction map for the western U.S., uh, Nebraska is the only uh, sort of hotspot potential for any um, substantial grasshopper population. What all plays into the, the high numbers or the low numbers, either potential? Uh, well, uh, particularly this time of year, uh, rainfall uh, can play into it, uh, as well as the availability of, of food. So um, we don't have a lot of availability of food uh, for grasshoppers right now uh, due to the drought that we've had. Um, so I guess there's one uh, optimistic aspect of, of some of the harsh weather that we've had. Uh, but right now we're also getting some um, pretty good spring rains in parts of, uh, parts of Nebraska. So that's going to contribute to a reduction of an already reduced potential for grasshopper numbers. Just to step back, what were your grasshopper numbers like last year, Jeff? Uh, we had moderate numbers of grasshoppers uh, with only economic um, treatable levels uh, really in, um, in just a couple counties in, in really the eastern panhandle. So uh, even last year was relatively spotty in terms of uh, economic grasshopper numbers. So if there are areas that do flare up, Jeff, what are the scouting and treatment recommendations? Uh, we have... Um, in rain, for rangeland grasshoppers, uh, we say around 15 uh, or more per square yard is sufficient um, average grasshopper number for considering treatment. And then we've got the reduced area agent treatment program uh, where strips of rangeland can be left untreated and treated to uh, both conserve beneficial insects and then suppress uh, pest grasshoppers. So we have a, a program there that uh, also then saves, uh, can have the cost in um, insecticide application uh, while conserving beneficial insects. We had talked about a month ago about the potential for uh, high cutworm numbers or high cutworm damage. There was a large infestation of army cutworms in this part of the state at least last year. What does the potential look like for this year out west? Yeah, so um, so far this spring I've seen some wheat fields that have had some um, substantial losses due to army cutworm feeding. Um, they, the moths lay eggs in the fall, uh, the larvae develop on a lot of different crops uh, and non-crop areas. Uh, wheat and alfalfa are a couple that we uh, pay a lot of attention to right now. Um, and they continue to develop over the winter, continue feeding. And so this spring we found some fields of alfalfa and wheat that have been hit by army cutworms. Uh, it's very difficult to control them at this point of the year. Uh, and right now a lot of the fields that I've scouted have fairly large larvae, which is indicating that they're about ready to start pupating in the soil and stop feeding. Um, so uh, army cutworm potential, the outlook for them in some of our spring planted crops uh, maybe our risk is a little bit lower because of the advanced development of the army cutworms. Uh, no, uh, we have, um, I haven't heard of any spraying uh, being reported for army cutworm, um, but uh, usually what happens is a uh, producer sees a substantial amount of loss that basically occurred over the winter um, and uh, oftentimes is, is a little behind the curve uh, on treatment. So is it worth it then to go out and scout or not? Uh, you know, I think it's worth scouting just to assess the situation uh, and see if really you did have economic levels. Um, there might be uh, some situations where you find a couple cutworms here and there, uh, and it can be combined with uh, some of the winter kill that we've seen in, in winter wheat, uh, which can also be combined with um, some of the issues we've had with the lack of moisture and and reduce stands due to that. So I think it's a good idea to still scout uh, just to ensure that um, the cause of whatever your stand loss might be would actually be due to cutworms or some other factor.